Okay, The Descendants, the last time that you were in town, uh, it was also like a matinee at CB's. Uh, I heard something about how the band only likes to play at uh, like all ages shows, shows during the day. No alcohol. Is that, is that a fact? Wow. Um, I don't... It's not so much during the day. I prefer to play to all ages shows just because like kids that are younger can come in and have a good time. You know, I mean, just as like anybody else. It's not, I don't think that it's that fair. Like just a lot of times when I was younger, I'd want to go see bands and I couldn't get in. You know, it was that type of thing because you had to be 21 to go and see a band. So I guess if it's all ages, then you kind of leave it like open. It's not so much that I don't or I dislike a certain age bracket it's just that like i like to get everybody allowed to come in yeah i mean i think obviously uh it's like you choose the non-limiting thing rather than the limiting thing because we're into just anyone who wants to come down come down 60 years old or six yeah it's just the limiting thing that's for the bars and they make their money and that's their business you know that's they have a business to run just like anybody else we can respect that you know that's why we do both you know no, so you guys do play other shows, not just other we, we play bars and stuff like that. We play where pretty much wherever we can get a thing happening. Yeah, a lot of times, in fact, I've been surprised a few times on this tour already in that crowds that I thought were going to be like older uh, crowds are just kind of boring. And they actually really, I really had a good time. I experienced a real lot of energy. You know, I'm, I guess I'm kind of getting old myself. I mean, I'm 22. It's like I, I was like 14 or 15 a few days ago, it seemed like, and now I'm like 22, and and that's over 21. That makes me like uh, one of the old dudes, you know. But uh, so uh, you know, we go for anybody. But descendants in general have uh, you you would find we have definitely one of the youngest crowds of any band, with the exception of like a Menudo situation or Muppets. You know, we're spastic. We're young ourselves. Like we're we're at a maturity level, somewhat way younger than that of like uh, our age. You know, like relative to like psychosexual awareness and that kind of stuff you know we're like kids in real terms you guys take do a lot of drugs part of it kids? no 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 we've i've never taken a drug before and then like several members of the band are in that same or similar situation we're not at all in any way a drug using band with the exception of coffee we do a lot of coffee you know which is a drug but it's not a it's not an illegal drug which uh, it's not doesn't it's not like morally any better or worse than heroin, but it's uh, you don't get thrown in jail for it, so it's cool. <laughs> the band, so are you guys uh, are proponents of the whole straight edge mentality? You really believe in that? No. no. Where do you think there's a uh, people people who do drugs? For me, um, I'm very into someone who does drugs as long as they don't infringe it upon my life and don't push it upon me. I uh, just so happen, you know, I've, I've experimented with drugs and, and I'm in a period right now where I'm not that into that. If somebody, is, if that's what makes somebody happy to like smoke something or inject something, then that's their right. And as long as they don't like rob me for, you know, or, you know, hurt me and trying to get their thing, that's cool. You know, I mean, who am I to like pass a judgment on somebody for, you know, if, if their thing is drinking Coca-Cola or their thing is like snorting cocaine you know that's just what people's preferences i like to play my bass 20 hours a day and if somebody told me you know that i couldn't do that that would be really not cool you know i think drugs are pretty it's been pretty well proven that like the whole thing with drugs is has been highly uh highly disguised and uh and uh, altered as far as their uh, severeness to your health. I mean, breathing the air in Los Angeles is far worse than like smoking pot or something. I've never smoked pot. I don't know what it feels like, but uh, I do know older like businessmen and stuff that are you know 40, 50, and 60 that have been like addicted to heroin since they were 20 and 30, and they're doing just fine in business doing their thing, going right about their thing. They're not dying, whereas, you know, people that have, like, a smoking habit or, say, a, a McDonald's habit are dying, you know, and having uh, clogged arteries by the time they're 40 and 50. So it's 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 something that the government, you know, has their paws into, and once they get their paws into it, you just, you know, you can write it off for... Uh, for like one of those issues that you don't really want to talk about because you just get yourself further into deep shit. It's like, uh, 
sex, drugs, religion, and politics. You know, just don't talk about them. <laughs> well, you guys actually, you seem to have a lot of, like, really serious concerns and seem to be pretty serious people. But, uh, like, the descendants I was thinking of is a real humorous fact. Yeah, we, we're just we haven't gotten any sleep in a long in a long time, so we're real tired. We're not. It's not like you, we you know probably will get some farts into the mic before this interview's over for sure. Well, I'm not looking for yeah. farts. Yeah, no, we go for that. Me. No, we're like, we're really. What, yeah. what do you what do you what would you have expected or something like that? I mean, Bill's wearing like thermal underwear walking around yeah, the streets. Yeah, I, mean, I was or walking around like the streets and I mean, you know, like it's pretty street. comical. Purple high tops and thermal underwear <laughs> with like bacon I mean, strips not, on the butt, full like bacon just, strips, uh, you know, like. You know, we're 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 pretty. Uh, we like to have a good time. That's my my whole theory. You, you know what's hot? My whole thing is for just to have fun. And if it's like I'm not having fun, then something's really really wrong. Because that's the only reason why I play is to like be with my best friends and to have fun. Hey, you, you know what's hot though? It's like a lot of of onlookers have judged the Descendants as like a comic band. Like we had the, those songs about food and like fishing and stuff. And, and they got the thing of like the descendants are a oh they have such a sense of humor, but the deal is that stuff is like reality for us. Like when I wrote those songs like Wiener Schnitzel and I like food, I weighed 245 pounds. Okay, I was like that wasn't like a joke. I was into that. Okay, it wasn't like I wasn't laughing. I was like hot. These are my songs. Just like a, just like Frank Sinatra sings about you know New York or something. In New like York that. or whatever it is. That's that's kind of funny that we said New York since we're in New York, but just. The same way anyone sings about anything, I sung about food. I was, like, into it, for real. And, like, Mr. Bass and Catalina going fishing. I was a commercial fisherman for, you know, four or five years. And, like, really, I am into fishing. And so it's, like, just, and, like, I want to be a bear and stuff. I mean, I, I'm, like, you know, I'm pretty close to a bear. I mean, it's, like, we, our stuff that we're into, we're into it. But it's just people that go to work and, like, wear suits and, like, and, like, aqua velva, they, they just can't fathom that, or like preppies, they can't fathom that someone can actually be into that. So they think it's like a joke. You know, it's it. We're pretty. We're weird. You know, we're just like weird people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. Well, who wrote the song "I'm a Pervert"? Milo wrote that one. <laughs> is he pervert then? I mean, is this from true experience? I think uh, personally, I don't know, but I think what the the deal was with that song. You probably would have to ask him, but I think the deal with that song is that. This idea just came out of his body, and that's how it was. It's not that he's a pervert, you know. It's just that it's this just is like an idea, you know. It's just something that it's happens. Something to trip out on, like uh, just the concept of like, you know, being real sexually centered. I mean, I'm real, you know. All I like to do is play my drums and have sex. That's what I'm into. So I relate to that song totally. You know, it's like just kind of recognizing the fact that. Disguising your deal with whatever hairstyle or job or social status you carry is fine, but that human beings are basically run by their instincts, and one of those is to have sex and to reproduce. And it's just like, hey, everybody, you're horny. Face up, you know. Yeah, get, <laughs> so like, get, get off the, like the, the high yeah. holy thing, you know. We have a we we uh, have like songs about farting and stuff like that. Yeah, you know? we got we, this new song. It's called Enjoy. See, we make up our own words, like the word queef. To queef is to fart. So, like, the chorus says, I queefed, enjoy. And that's, like, the chorus, and it repeats it. And it's just about farting, and we cut farts during the song and burp and stuff, but it's like a song. I mean, it has a beat and everything, and it all fits together. It's not like a spoken thing or something. There's yeah. a little space. The music comes in, a little bait, doo 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 and then I go, eh. You know, there's, like, a space for it. It's all, you know, worked out like that. It's just like a hot song. Who writes most of the songs? Or how does that work with the actual song? Someone comes up with a uh, idea in the middle of the night or driving down the freeway or whatever their trip is, jogging, let's say, and they say, wow, this idea, and they plunk it out and then come into an acoustic guitar and shows the other members and everybody kind of contributes. We start with the main a little ball and we go for like the layer concept everybody throws in like cards and adds their two cents worth you know where I might come up with an idea but the idea by the time the song is completed is totally different just because everybody's added and twisted and it's gotten churned and chewed up and spit out so many times that that's the way it comes out so it's kind of like everybody contributes to the writing but like the main little like 
germ comes out of somebody's mind. Uh, you, you know, it's like, it's funny about the songs because it's like, I feel like we're just now starting to write in the, in the, in the sense that the whole band is writing songs and working as a band. That's something we've just started. Well, there's like, a big difference. Prior, prior to, to recent, the recent incarnation of the band, which only been, hasn't been in existence like five months. Prior to that, we worked as more like uh, individuals, um, kind of like individuals uh, mutually using each other to execute our each individual's concepts, uh, as opposed to like having a unit and having kind of a band, a band thing that kind of has its own thing and goes in its own direction, which is how we work now. Like uh, on our earlier albums, it was more like, here's my song, and you play this part, and you play that part, I'll play this part, and we'll go, and it'll sound like this, and no, I want it to sound like this, not like that, but pretty much just like this, and here you sing it like this. And then it was all kind of mapped out, and it was really tight-assed, you know? And now we do more of a, of, of a jammed out thing, more of a like... Everybody puts in their two cents. Even if one guy like writes a lot of it, like might write the word, I might write the melody and the words or something or the chords. But the it's like that starts the thing, and then that just kind of starts the thing, and then it snowballs into some usually way different from how it started to the point of like where the guy who wrote it doesn't even really <laughs> recognize it as the same thing at all. Yet he still feels like wow, I, that was like my idea that came out of my heart, and here it is, and now it's like this brilliant thing it's really nice or maybe wow god i really hate that i don't want to play that they ruined my song you know it works both ways sometimes now you talk about like the previous incarnation of the band it seemed like after the uh, milo goes to college album, the descendants we didn't i didn't hear much about them here i don't know was the band still playing together before uh you reissued the fatty D? we we broke up for three years while i was in black flag mm -hmm. you know we stopped playing and when i quit black flag we got back together no. So yeah, we 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 stopped playing. That's why nobody heard anything about us. And the you know the band's a little different now. We got Doug on bass, whereas before we had Tony on bass. You know. And uh, I heard the uh, the Angry Samoans got back together too. Oh really? I you know I've never heard that band play. Well, really like, uh, you've heard them? I always put them in kind of in a lot of ways the same with the Descendants. Punching. Really? Kind yeah. Of pop. I've never thought of it like that. I don't know. I like that. I've seen them a humor. couple of times. Yeah. Like short songs, especially like with the Fatty Pig, you know. Like yeah. They do plenty of really short songs. Yeah. You know? See, yeah. A lot of bands do that now, though. I mean, I hear all kinds yeah, of bands like doing that. Yeah, there's like a DIR band or, or FRI or I don't know what they're called. Oh, I, is that what they're called? I don't remember. Anyway, but they did, yeah, I really don't remember. But they did like an album with like 26 songs on it and they're all less than a minute or something like that. Yeah, a lot of bands IUD do the real or short something ones like that. I don't remember what it was. I remember when I first heard that Fatty Pete. Yeah. I, it was, you know, the songs were the fastest. <laughs> yeah. Had yeah. the shortest <laughs> yeah. of anything I've yeah. ever heard. I mean, when we did that, it was like people put it on and they just go, what? What? What is this? You know, it was like, it was totally unheard of. It was like, these guys are weird they're from mars or something you know like wiener schnitzel i mean let's be serious i think a lot of bands you know definitely you know that really opened a lot of doors for a lot of bands which is good you know because then uh, they turn around and open doors for us too you know it's like everybody learns from everybody else you know it's like, it's like a big it's like the earth's like one big mass and the the, the, the thing's kind of like throw in and out of each other you know and everybody I contribute my little thing and then like once it's gone then I can like receive something else from somebody else over here you know it's like a, a big exchange of energy going on you know it's like we're into having fun that's our big thing you know we don't go for like a big money or you know a lot of not a big money like uh, we want to be rich or we want to play the forum although I think those two things would be kind of fun to do because I think it would be fun to play in a large place in front of people but not like as more like a means to have fun not as like an end you know like I don't have any material goals I don't think any of us have any specific material goals that they could state I might be wrong you know like I don't aspire to have any money or any possessions I have like everything I need you know which is like my drums 
and Parathermals. this thing that sticks out from my body down around the waist, and that's about all I need, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys first did that, you know, with the really short songs, I mean, how did you ever come up with that? You know, what made you decide to do something? I mean, it's kind of an abstract question. But it's time for uh, kind of thing bonus cup done. story number 14. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Go for it. Ready? On. Ready? You guys have like standing questions. No, no, standing it's just dancers. that it's just that there's like there was certain there are like you know twenty or thirty like crucial incidents in like descendant history that people oh. just need to know about. And the the bonus cuff is like the first thing. It's like uh, when I used to commercial fish. <laughs> wait, wait. If you slowed all those songs down, they'd probably be minutes long. <laughs> yeah. See, when I used to commercial fish. Uh. uh I'd stay up for like a lot of days and I had a, a partner who was an amphetamine addict and uh, he would buy like amphetamines by the jar big thing if you look on Wiener Schnitzel he, he gets a co-credit with me he's not in the van he's my friend Pat you know and he would buy these big things by the jar and he would woof these black beauties and I would be trying to fish and stay up and it was like no way I would drink coffee and after like a day it's like coffee would quit hitting me you know it wouldn't give me my thing so it's kind of like how it is now I've had like six cups of coffee today already and I'm, this is not working so it's cool but anyway so I go well hell I gotta get it going here you know because he's all ready to go fishing and I'm ready to take a snooze so I took I started taking these cups and filling them up like two inches high with instant coffee you see like like a lot of coffee and then putting water in and sugar and cream and the, when I, when I, the first day I did it, I go, hmm, okay, I got to go fishing. Well, I'll, I'll make like a, a extra bonus cup that'll have more in it to get me wired. And then from then on, I just called it the bonus cup. And it was like I would drink these every day, and I would drink like, I got to a point where like one day I had like 21 of them, you know. I mean, I, that's worse than like any drug you could take. I mean, that's like worse than worse. You know, that's yeah. why I have a problems with my nerves and stuff because I'm really spun out you know I'm, I'm like uh, I've been through like heavy speed thing even though I've never taken a drug so it's like that's the bonus cup and when we did the fat EP was when I was like bonus 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 I was like really tripped out you know and I had that wiener schnitzel song you know about like going to wiener schnitzel and getting food and it's just like it's like a tapping thing like okay you know and the food thing and just uh, all the songs are like real fast it's like Okay, let's go record these. We gotta go fishing, you know. Okay, hurry up. Okay, okay, let's go. Okay, see you later. Bye. You know, we recorded the fatty pee in like six hours. You know, it's like okay. I didn't even have any drumsticks. I used like these broken ones, two different size. You know, the back of them, no hi hat. Like Robo wouldn't let me use his hi hat. I had to use like two different cymbals, and stuff. <laughs> it's just like that record's hot because it's totally like yeah. Someone talked us into recording. We we don't normally play in front of people, but like they talked us into it. So here it is. You suck if you don't like it. You know, it's like kind of like we weren't into people. We just play for our own amusement. You know, it's so weird. Somebody decided they talked us into like hey, you guys should record and do a record. We're like a record? What? We're gonna go fishing. You know, it's like, it's like weird. But that's the bonus cup, and that's why the songs are like so short and fast because it's like a speed paranoia thing you know people probably can relate to that that do speed I don't know I never done speed uh, you guys uh, you guys record for the new alliance label right that's uh, the same thing with uh, the Minutemen did you guys know D Boone oh yeah D's like you know one of my best friends for sure so how do you feel when you hear about what happened you want to talk about this I don't I don't do like a crying you know like if my dad died I wouldn't cry I don't I, nothing could like probably ever make me cry you know again I'm real chafed but like yeah I mean I miss D he's a good guy and I hope he's like doing his thing now I hope he's incarnated or in heaven or whatever it is he's into and uh, you know he was a good guy good one of my best friends you know but it's not like a big it wasn't like a it didn't affect my life it only it only in the terms of like I I thought about D and like, wow, D was a cool guy. You know, yeah, D was a cool guy. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. You're never gonna see the Minutemen. It's hot because see what I thought about is like how many, how many, like many, many, many times I saw the Minutemen yeah. and how I would trip out on the way he danced when he played. And now it's like, 
that's not happening anymore. But how many, the fact how is, many, is like, that it was hot when it was happening. It was red hot. Like how many live tapes are there with me yelling, <laughs> take a shit, D. Boone, take a shit, you know, while he's playing and stuff. And just like, you know. They used to practice at the studio where Billy and I and Ray live. Yeah. They practiced. They rented there. it from us, you know. It's like the studio that we own or that we lease. Lease or whatever. It's Descendant Central Headquarters, you know. But uh, it was cool because I one time I weighed more than D, like like we had a way off, and I weighed like 245 and he weighed like 242. <laughs> I mean he he went up to like three, you know, and I went down to like 150. We like went our separate ways, but one time I weighed more than him. It was like really hot, you know. I was like D, I weigh more than you do, ha! And he's like, no, you don't. And we got on the scale, and I weighed more than him. <laughs> it's hot. So did you really just like put on all this weight just so that you could weigh more? No, 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 no. No, I was just, uh, like, into food. I'm still really into food, but I'm into, like, exercise and stuff, too. At the time, I was just into food. No, I'm into food. Food is, like, a very fun thing. It's cool to eat and stuff. Yeah, no, I could I could be, I could could be, just as easily food, food be like story, fat. You know? Food story number, like, 12. Today, we pulled over to get Chinese food. Yet, we saw a pizza parlor yeah, glistening in the distance. So we got, like, pizza before we got Chinese food. Like, ate pizza and, like, walked to the Chinese place and, like, ate Chinese food. That was, like, you know. Yeah. (laughs) Eating is, like, really cool. I've gained, like, 10 pounds since this tour started, which is not cool. I go for, like, heavy weight fluctuation. Like, I go from 150 to 200. Like, I go that, like, twice yearly. Up, down, up, down. You know, all the time. (laughs) No, it's, it's, to me, I think it's real healthy because it gives you different perspectives on things. Like, probably if you're okay like you're a pretty wiry just like skinny type guy or something like ray like ray is always really laying into like fat people and it's hot because ray can like you know he's like look at that look at that big old like fat guy and i can relate to being fat like that because i've been that way so it's like i can i i understand the psychosis that involves like someone who's real overweight like d i totally related to d Yet, I can also relate to what it means to be, like, really, you know, like, super skinny and, like, totally tight, because I've been that way before, too. You know, I've been, like, all kinds of ways. So, it's like it gives you a, pardon the pun, a well-rounded, uh, <laughs> well-rounded, you know, view of, like, the various body types there are on the earth we live in, you know, and the various frustrations that occur in, like, trying to develop relationships and friendships and, like, sexual things, because people... People don't want to, you know, like, no girls want to screw a fat guy. Like, when I was fat, no girls wanted to screw me. You know, now I could get any girl I want. You know, so it's just like, it's like, yet I'm the same person. I'm the same exact person, you know, same heart, same soul. So it's like, you learn. You learn that, like, people are real shallow and, you know, you have to be like a, you know, every man for himself. It's a, I thought it was to be a pretty big change for a lot of stuff. This is a conscious idea to try and work and write more pop songs. The songs for that album were written anywhere from six months prior to it being released to five years prior to it being released. And I think that's pretty much the answer. I don't think there was a conscious effort into writing pop songs. I didn't even play on the album, just as an observer. Descendants, that's just... I see, like, a lot of pop in, like, bikeage and a lot of pop in, like, myage, you know, and hope from Milo Goes to College album, you know? So it's like that. I don't think there was a conscious effort. I think it kind of just... Songs were written in all different time the, periods. The songs are more... A little more, uh... Uh, the songs to me like a song is not really a a um, a tangible thing like there is no such thing as a song okay to me like a song is uh, what's what's being played like right here right now and like the song bikeage or something marriage bikeage those ones like okay that I wrote on Milo goes to college those are like real poppy along with like silly girl and good good things okay like i wrote all those songs basically in the same time frame okay they're all the same thing i got a certain thing that like gets my rocks off that i like to feel i play it and stuff and i sing or whatever i mean just for myself milo sings our singer but i mean my my thing and it's like but uh the the way we were playing at the time we recorded i don't want to grow up 
was all of the rehearsals for that album were done acoustically with me playing on books and just like acoustic guitars and all four of us singing like singing harmonies so the records got this kind of like let's play these chords and sing thing whereas the milo record is more like um more kind of a aggressive electric kind of more a noisy sh shouting thing whereas grow up is more like let's sing and kind of it's more fun you use the word poppy that doesn't really mean a real lot to me because it's pop is like popular and that's just means uh i suppose that the popular culture as we know it, it could uh relate to this song and i think that applies to all of our songs all of them you know but maybe let's call it melodic you know yeah gr a lot of the songs on grow up are a lot more melodic but i think that's the execution more than the like written songs it's just kind of the mood we were in at the time when you go see us live it all kind of homogenizes together that's a stupid word it all kind of blends together uh and you get you get the full picture it's kind of like the yellow album like grow up complements milo which complements bonus fat they all kind of show the different sides of the band and uh myself i like the grow up album the best uh but that's cuz i am kind of a I like uh, real melodic stuff like that as far as like the way the stuff kind of sounds. A lot of it, we, we used some different production techniques on the, on the Grow Up album that we didn't use on the Milo album. Two different producers, you know, Spot, Spot engineered and co-produced with me the Milo Goes to College record, uh, where the Grow Up record, I produced it, or we worked, me and Ray worked, you know, together producing it. And uh, with an engineer, David Tarling, who was someone I was working with in Black Flag, he had a lot of like Mersh techniques he used, which uh, some of which I liked, some of which I did not like. But an album to me is like not a whole lot more than a learning experience. It's like, let's work with David Tarling and kind of see how this turns out. Oh, it turned out real melodic, real poppy. Oh, that's kind of nice. I kind of like that. You know, I wouldn't want like I wouldn't want our all of our records to sound like, like that, but it's kind of nice for one. It's like ah, it's kind of pretty. You know, it's not like we want to get married to any certain sound. Our next record's probably people are gonna be going, oh, you guys sound like a rock band, heavy metal. So it's, our stuff's we play real, real powerfully live. We're just developing this like head of steam. And it's like our 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 rhythm stuff is just going to be like totally unrelenting, just like power. I mean, it's it's fast, but it's like really powerful. And uh, the, a lot of the guitar parts are very uh, they sink in a lot deeper in the rhythms and stuff. And the vocals, a lot of the stuff is real aggressive. So people are, oh well, you guys sound like uh, you've gone uh, this or you've gone that. You know, we just we kind of just play. We're into playing and just jamming out and. Each time we go in, uh, we learn stuff and we we go through new experiences. And most of the fans that are that are worth being fans that are I mean people that I would want to go out and meet and talk to, most of those people undergo those same kind of learning experiences and uh, changes, and they kind of grow along with us and just kind of go through the same stuff we go through. You know, it's kind of like walking through doors together. You know. When you talk about an older audience, it's getting. You know, you thought you're part of the older audience. It's the same people who listen to the band are getting older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, older in age, but I mean, that that's a totally relative term. Like, a lot of our songs that we have now are uh, incite more uh, youthful playfulness in me than any of our other songs. Like, a lot of the... Uh, stuff we have like enjoy you know about farting i mean that really is hot the thing and just some of our songs uh, sour grapes you know it's just like kind of a thing uh, you know the the way it's a song kind of you'd expect like a real a real jealous uh sexually deprived you know 13 year old to write or something and like uh just we we our stuff is uh really uplifting for us in a 
in a youthful sense. You know, that's kind of our goal through our music is to reach uh, like a euphoria to where like things become like timeless and ageless. You know, and that means us and our audience, and that's why kids come out and they want to they want to like feel that energy. They want to get the uplifting. It's like when you get up in the morning and you want your cup of coffee. You know, it's like I need my cup of descendants. You know, I need my like uplifting for the month or whatever. People like most people that listen to us. You know, when they wake up, they put it on and it's like, okay, wow. Well, you know, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna like get up now. You can't get that from. Black Sabbath or some, although they're really great. It just it doesn't give you the thing. They're great. They're my favorite band, but uh, yeah, it's different. It's a little weird. We got like all kinds of different, you know, musical tastes and stuff. Like we're not we're not all into the same music. Everybody's into their own stuff. Ray, Doug, me, Milo. We overlap a little, but basically we're all into different stuff. You know. Okay, well, uh, that's about it. Do you guys, is there anything else you want to add to this? Well, we could, if you could, uh, you know, we'll, we'll say our address, you know, that way people want to write to us, oh, that okay. kind of thing. I'll just, uh, you know, if you got a pen or paper, anybody out there, and you could write down our address. It's P.O. Box 1224, Lomita, L-O-M-I-T-A, California, 900. Seven one seven, and that way, if you want to write to us or uh, anything like that, you could uh, you could do it. You know, so it's cool. We like to 